Hello, in this video we're going to look at joint production, finding the optimal price and output of each good. Here we're going to have a firm that produces and sells baseball bats. Every bat produced, however, creates one unit of wood chips that can also be sold. The marginal cost of producing a bat is constant at $18, so MC equals 18. The inverse demand functions for bats and wood chips are given by, so here's the inverse demand for baseball bats using subscript B for bats, and here's the inverse demand for wood chips using W to represent wood chips. So the first thing we're going to do is get marginal revenue from each inverse demand equation. So the price equation or inverse demand for baseball bats was given as follows on the last slide. We're going to create total revenue. So total revenue is price, which is this right here, multiplied by quantity. So simplifying that up a little bit, we get this result. And now taking the derivative of total revenue with, uh, with respect to the quantity of baseball bats, we're going to get this result here. So 2 divided by 20 just simplifies down the 1 over 10 when we take the derivative. And doing the same thing for wood chips, we have the inverse demand. We're going to take this and multiply it through by Q to get total revenue. So we got our total revenue function. Taking the derivative of this, we have the marginal revenue of wood chips. And once again, when we take the derivative, we're going to have 2 divided by 1,000. So that's just 1 over 500. OK, our next step. We have our two marginal revenue equations for bats and wood chips. So remember, every time we produce a bat, a byproduct of production is one unit of wood chips. And the next step here is we're going to add up these two marginal revenue equations and set that equal to marginal cost. So marginal revenue of baseball bats plus the marginal revenue of wood chips equals here marginal cost of $18. Here I'm just going to set these, uh, the QB and QW. They're just going to represent Q here because, every, again, every time we produce a baseball bat, we get a wood chip. So we're going to have these two Qs equal to one another, dropping the subscripts and now simplifying. We get this result. So 70 plus 0.8. Here, minus Q divided by 10, minus Q divided by 500. We'll simplify to minus 51Q over 500. And that all equals marginal cost of 18. Going to solve for Q. And one more step here. We get Q equals 517.65. So after we do that, we're going to evaluate each marginal revenue equation at Q equals 517.65. So for baseball bats, if we were to produce 517, 508, say 518 baseball bats, marginal revenue would be positive. Okay, and that's fine. We put this 517 or 517.65 for wood chips in the marginal revenue equation. So evaluate marginal revenue at this Q value here, and we get a negative. This is a problem. When one of the marginal revenues is negative at this Q level of output, we need to do the following. We should sell the number of wood chips up to the point where marginal revenue equals zero. So setting the wood chip marginal revenue equation equal to zero and solving for Q subscript W, the firm should only sell 400 wood chips. They might actually in the end be producing more wood chips, but they only want to sell 400. And the price we're going to sell those wood chips at, just plugging this 400 back into the inverse demand for wood chips, we're going to sell a unit of wood chips at 40 cents each. Well, what about baseball bats? Okay, for baseball bats then, not done with this problem, the firm should produce and sell where the marginal revenue of baseball bats equals the, its marginal cost. So setting the marginal revenue of baseball bats equal to 18 and solving for the quantity of baseball bats, the firm should produce 520 baseball bats. 
and sell those baseball bats at a price of $44 each. So I plugged this 520 into the inverse demand for baseball bats, and we're going to sell a baseball bat at $44 each. So to note here, the firm will produce 520 baseball bats and 520 units of wood chips. However, the firm will only sell 400 units of wood chips. That's where the marginal revenue equals zero, but will sell all 520 baseball bats in order to maximize profit. The firm will discard the 120 units of wood chips. Selling them would cause marginal revenue to become negative, reducing the overall firm profit. All right, I'm going to do a new example here. Uh, it's going to be the same exact setup as the first example, except we're going to have a different value for marginal cost. So here we're going to assume that the marginal cost is going to be 40.2. Every time we produce a baseball bat, the marginal cost is going to be a little over $40. And it's going to be constant. So we're going to proceed like we did before. We're going to add up the two marginal revenues and set it equal to marginal cost. Okay, so just simplifying this now, again, I'll, I'm going to drop the subscripts on the Q terms and just adding up these Q terms here. We'll get this result solving for Q. Q will equal 300. As before, I'm going to take this 300 and I will evaluate each marginal revenue equation separately. So the marginal revenue of baseball bats evaluated at Q equals 300 is positive, so that's a good sign. And the marginal revenue of wood chips evaluated at 300 units of wood chips is also positive. So in this case, we are going to produce 300 baseball bats, and a byproduct of that will be 300 units of wood chips. So marginal revenue for each product is positive at 300 bats and 300 units of wood chips. The firm will produce and sell 300 bats and 300 units of wood chips. So this example is a little bit simpler than a first example. In terms of the price, uh, the price of wood chips evaluated at 300 units. We're going to sell a unit of wood chips at 50 cents. And then plugging 300 into the inverse demand for baseball bats. Baseball bats in this example will sell at $55 each. So let's do a recap. We're going to add up the two marginal revenue equations and set them equal to marginal cost. And we're going to solve for Q. We're going to plug Q back into both marginal revenue equations. As we saw in the first example, if one of the marginal revenue equations is less than zero, is negative at this value of Q, say marginal revenue uh, for good A, we're going to set the marginal revenue for good A equal to zero and solve for Q subscript A. And that's the maximum number of units that we'll sell of this QA good. Then for the other good, we're going to set marginal revenue equal to marginal cost and solve for Q subscript B. You'll note here that Q subscript B will exceed Q subscript A. So like in our first example, we sold more baseball bats and wood chips. In our last example, which is the, the simpler of the two cases, we get this value for Q. We plug it into marginal revenue for good A, marginal revenue for good B, and if they are both greater than zero, we're basically done. We're going to produce Q units of output. So the number of baseball bats that would sell, for example, would equal the number of un uh, units of wood chips that would sell. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful.